Hi, welcome to another SQL Sunday, where I go through a walkthrough of a real data science interview question. Let's get started. All right, so this question over here is growth of Airbnb. So let's read the question. Estimate the growth of Airbnb each year using the number of hosts registered as the growth metric. The rate of growth is calculated by taking the number of hosts registered in the current year minus the number of hosts registered in the previous year, divided by the number of hosts registered in the previous year times 100. Okay, I'll put the year number of hosts in the current year, number of hosts in the previous year, and the rate of growth. Round the rate of growth to the nearest percent and order the result in the ascending order based on the year. Assume that the data set consists only of unique hosts, meaning that there are no duplicate hosts listed. Okay, so let's actually check out the table. So this is a really big table. Um, a lot of stuff going on over here. But really though, like what we actually want to find ultimately is the year, the number of hosts in the current year, number of hosts in the previous year, and the growth rate. So we actually don't need most of the columns over here. So this is what the table looks like. Um, it has like a bunch of stuff in it. But really what we need here is just the IDs. And we know that a data set only consists of unique hosts. So each of these uh, IDs would be one single host. And we also need the year that they registered. Hosted this column. That's pretty much it. Yeah, we actually don't need any of the other columns here, even though there's a lot that's being shown. Okay. So some of the assumptions that I have um, looking at this table now and just looking at the question. Um, so my, my first assumption was answered already. It was like the data set consists only of unique hosts. Okay, so they are only unique hosts. Um, the other assumption that I wanna make here is because we're looking at rate of growth, that means in the first year, the uh, rate of growth, there would not be rate of growth because there would be no previous year. So if I were an actual interview, I would probably ask the interviewer, like, what would you like me to do about that scenario? Like, should I just leave it as null, leave it as is, or should I you know, get rid of that role or do something like that? So the assumption that I'll be making here is just that I will have a row um, that will have some blanks in it and just leave it, leave it as it is. That's pretty much the only assumption that I have. So before I get started and actually dive into the query, um, I'm going to go through my general strategy of first writing out exactly how I'm going to approach this question in English and then go and write the query. Let's first write down what it is that we ultimately want. So we want the year and the number of hosts. I guess I call it like num host current and the num host previous. And we also want the growth rate. So that's the ultimate table that we want. Okay, so now how I would approach this question. Okay, so first I'm gonna have a CTE over here um, that is gonna just get the year and the number of hosts for that year. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna do a self point of this table over here and that's going to be based on so self-join that's going to be on um so it's like the previous year is equal to current year minus one right um and it's this is going to be like a left join because we want that first row as well Mm, okay, and then after that, I do the join, and then what I would do is get the current year um, and the number current num, what did I call it? Num hosts current and the num hosts previous. And I also want to get the um, growth rate which would be calculated by um, current year. So it would be like num host current minus the num host previous uh, divided by the num host previous. Put around that. 
multiply by 100. So that would give me the growth rate. And then ultimately, I want to get the, uh, I want to round the growth rate to nearest percent. Um, and order by the current year. Okay, so this looks like the correct approach to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually write the query. Oh, I spelled this wrong. Order. Yeah. Okay, so to actually write this query, query um, I would do like from this table, Airbnb, search details. Um, and I want to select the year, which is not called year. It is host, host since. It's called host since. And I want to actually extract the year from that because this is like a, a date. Um, so I want to extract, oops, year from host since. I'm just going to call that year. Um, and then I want to get the number of posts. So that would be, I think it's ID. I'm pretty sure it's ID. Yeah, ID. So, and then I want to get the um, count ID as num host registered for that year. And we don't need to do like distinct over here um, because it says that it's unique host already. Okay, and then we need to group by one, which is the year over here. Uh, since this is going to be a CT, we're going to call this table registers. Let's call it registers as like that. Um, and then we're going to do the joins now. So from registers, let's call that current year. Um, join, left join, registers previous year. Um, and we are going to be joining on so left join previous year is equal to current year minus one. So oops, current year dot year is equal to previous year dot year minus one. No, plus one. Wait. Oh, no. Did it, did it the other way around? Oh, okay. I'm just going to do it the way that I wrote it, although it doesn't really matter that much. Previous year is equal to current year dot year minus one. Okay. So I did that. And then I want to get the current year, num post current, num post previous, as well as the growth rate. Okay. Um, so for that, I would get the current year dot year. And then I want to get the current year dot num host. Uh, we can call that, what did I call it? Num host current. And then we can get the previous year dot num host as num host previous. And then we want to get the growth rate. So that is the current year dot num host minus the previous year dot num host divided by the previous year dot num host multiply by 100. Did I put a space in here? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, and then we want to put parentheses around this and then also just multiply that by 1.00 so that it won't be integer division. Um, and then we're going to call that growth rate. Um, okay. And then next we have to round the growth rate and then order by current year. Okay. So to do that, we can just do round over here. That should do by the percent. And then we want to order by the year. So order by one, which is the current year. So let me just go over this query and make sure that I did everything correctly. Pull this down a little bit. Uh, let's see. So registers here. Okay, from Airbnb search details, I want to do extract the year from host since the year, county IDs. Okay, so I get year and number of hosts. And then um, I'm doing the join over here. So 
from registers current year left join registers previous year on previous year is equal to current year minus one that makes sense and then I'm going to get the current, the year of the current year, and then get the number of hosts for the current year and number of hosts for the previous year. And then finally, the um, growth rate, which is current year number of hosts minus previous year times 1.00 divided by the previous year, um, and then multiply that by 100 as the growth rate. And then we round by the growth rate. Okay, so we did that. And then finally, we order by the current year. So order by one. Okay, so that looks correct to me. Fingers crossed. Let's see if it works. Hey, nice. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. This is what it looks like. Just to double check. Look at their expected output. Um, 200, 200, <laughs> 2009. <laughs> Uh, number of current, previous year, growth rate. Cool. I mean, that looks correct. Awesome. So in terms of efficiency and optimization here, uh, so we do have a self-join over here. You know what? I think we can actually also just do this with a window function. Yeah, I think we can actually do that with a window function as well. Why don't I actually leave that to you guys as homework? Write in the comments below um, how you how you would approach this question using a window function. And also, if you think that it will be more efficient or less efficient than the way that I've done it here using a self-join. So before I wrap up this video, I do have an announcement. My SQL for Data Science and Tech Interviews course in partnership with 365 Data Science has launched this week. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to ace the SQL portion of the interview, complete with 10 full mock interviews. So you may actually be wondering what's the difference between that course and the SQL Sundays and all the other free content I already have on this channel. Let me explain. If you follow this free video where I outline how I passed my own FANG interview and practice the SQL Sundays in the style that I explained in that video, you would be mostly there. I mean, that's how I did it myself and I didn't even have the SQL Sundays or anything like that and I was clearly fine. This course though is for people who are looking for a little bit more and a resource that I personally wish that I had when I was interviewing. It outlines the exact steps to do to learn enough SQL to pass the interviews. But I think the biggest value is my guided walkthrough and coaching through 10 full mock interviews. Unlike the SQL Sunday mock interview walkthroughs, the 10 full mock interviews has an actual interviewer that asks follow-up questions, gives clarifications, and provides feedback. I also walk you through how to install PG Admin, which is for developing and using a Postgres SQL database. And then I provide you the data and SQL script that adds the interview questions data into the database so that you can actually answer the interview questions yourself. It's basically as close to the real interview as you can get. My goal is for you to feel like you have done 10 full SQL interviews before your actual interview so that your actual one will feel just like another mock. And finally, you will also get my direct support um, if you have any questions. I honestly wish I could answer every single question on YouTube, of course, but unfortunately, if I did that, I would literally not do anything else in my day. So uh, I will be prioritizing answering all questions from the course. I've linked a coupon code in the description so you can get it for $9.99 on Udemy uh, for a limited amount of time. If you're interested, please do check it out and I'll see you guys in the next live stream or video.